All right, great. Good morning, everybody. I'm Marianne Capehart, um, coordinator of the community side of the WaterWise program, University of Arizona. If you're not from around here, we're down in, in Cochise County. And um, this is also Nicole Miller, part of the program. She does the youth part of the um, WaterWise program. And we're both in Bisbee today. So welcome, thanks so much for coming. Um, I love these oaks that we have around here, um, especially up on the Bisbee Divide. Maybe I'll ask Petey later which ones those are. Um, but we're very excited to have um, Petey Mesquite come today and talk about, um, come in a sense, talk about um, all the beautiful oaks in this part of the world. Um, so we really appreciate everyone um, adapting to this new format in the meanwhile. Um, and Petey, thank you for adapting as well. We have had a beautiful plant sales with him. We will do that again at some point, but we're online and um, we're adapting probably like, you know, the Oaks have had to adapt to make it this far. Um, so we'll continue doing that. And uh, um, I want to introduce Petey Mesquite, um, probably familiar to a lot of you from the Bisbee Farmers Market or from the Spadefoot Nursery in Tucson, I want to say that they have an amazing uh, website that descri describes um, plants in wonderful detail. So check that out. Um, and you may know him also from the radio, KXCI. He did Growing Native, and you can still hear that. Um, I think they're podcasts now. Um, so if you want to hear a lot more of Petey, go for it. All right. Um, he will tell you more about himself. He lives um, in this area and knows it intimately well. So we're really excited to hear what his observations have been of late. So thanks, everybody. Petey, take it All away. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Let me see if I can figure this out. Thank goodness Nicole is still there. You're good. Thank you. Well, first of all, it's fall. And uh, I wrote a poem years ago about fall. And since I only get to read it once a year, I, I've been reading it for years, once a year. Um, but you know, fall in southeastern Arizona or along the borderlands, um, there's usually a hint in August, some little breeze, you know, and, and usually in August, there's been monsoon, but there's been monsoon or, or you know, or mon later or something this, uh, this time around. It's been a grueling hot, summer and I waited for the longest time for this clue. <laughs> I needed this clue. Tell me fall is coming. I don't think, yeah, it's one of my favorite seasons. There's just no getting around it. I just love fall. And, it, and it's broken up in these beautiful increments and it brings back memories. So I waited for that breeze and it took a long time to come, but it did come. And, and years ago, I wrote this little poem. There's a little breeze that comes in the fall and it's full of wonderful smells that help me recall. Oh, I smell dry grasses or moist canyons sometimes. And in the evening, I'm sure that I can smell pines. But my favorite odors that come in the air create something some dude called memoir and volontaire. I swear I can smell my father on that day when he hugged me. It was a rare day and it often has bugged me. Oh, I smell my lover snug in a tent. I think that was in the Gila. Yeah, yeah, that's where we went. I remember the kids giggling that night before we slept and thinking, you've done something right, Petey. And I quietly wept. Wait, I smell our old truck. Now that's an odor that I miss. Old oil and upholstery with a hint of cat piss. And that truck took us everywhere. And I bet we looked like the Jodes with our pots and our pans rattling down those forest roads. Oh, Petey, Petey, come out of the breeze. You're driving us crazy with your old factories. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but let me add just one more. The smell of the desert. Now that I adore. Well, welcome. The title, Native Oaks of Southeastern Arizona, is so intimidating. <laughs> And I'm the one that came up with it. Um, not all of them, but most of them. So there are a dozen species, depending on uh, your taxonomist of choice. Um, 12 to 13 species. I, I think I cover nine. Um, 
and I'll, and I'll talk about some other plants, but I want to tell you first that I, how I come by oaks. I'm no ecologist, I'm no expert. 25 years ago, 26 years ago, I was running a nursery in, in Tucson, and I started falling in love with the oaks. And since I'm a horticulturist, I started sticking acorns in dirt. <laughs> I didn't know anything. And what you're about to get is really what, is, what I've learned is from sticking acorns in nursery mix and watching oaks grow. I had to go out and gather the acorns. This was my pitch at the farmer's market, Disney farmer's market. Someone said, oh, I don't know about $25 for that oak. I said, dude, you're talking to the guy who got the acorn <laughs> and grew it for three years to put this in front of you. So uh, I love them and that's what this is about. I'm not, um, so let's consider this a primer on the oaks and then maybe next year I'll come back and even I'll know some more but anyway on with the show okay here we go oops um turk I don't know I just had to show you turtles we live home here on the west side of the Chiricahua 25 little over 25 years now and for years box turtles started walking in well this was a beautiful journey for me because I grew up in Kentucky and box turtles were my passion when I was a little boy. So to move to Southeast Arizona and see box turtles, well, heart be still. So I certainly not, if they came through, I just put out food and water. I don't, they're not caged. I see them walking down our driveway <laughs> to come to our yards. Here's one eating a centipede. I had watered some plants, a centipede raced out and this turtle, they're remarkably fast when they want to be. So box turtles. Um, this is the, the Western ornate box turtle. I think it's Terrapini ornita, ornata luteola. Um, as you can see, uh, everyone is just used to the box turtles walking through. <laughs> Sometimes they come by our porch and they look up. It's like, well, I got to put out some food. Um, this spring was so funny because we had good winter rains again. And this is just off the highway uh, off I-10, this is a mustard call. It used to be called Lescarella Fisteria. So this last year, but this was taken this year. So two, two um, great years of winter rains produced some fun spring uh, wildflowers. As, don't ask me about monsoon. That didn't occur. Fisteria or Lescarella gordoni, Gordon's bladder pod. There it is. And you can see why it's a, called bladder pod. And on this, this was the start of the pandemic for me in COVID. We said, this was a uh, March. And we said, you know, we're not going anywhere. That's it. We're staying. So every week we take a trip. And this, at the beginning, we said, let's drive up toward the Pinaleños. And this is the Pinaleños in, in March. Isn't it bad? Bring flowers and calves. Where do we live? We live in the... That's cups. The little one's cream cups. The other one is a Mexican poppy. And that's a field of Mexican poppies. Uh, a meadow of cream cups. Uh, and these golden glows on the slopes, those are, those are poppies on rocky slopes. So on that trip, we found a little dirt road that, that wound around and, and we just said to explore. And so here's our first oak. It's Quercus, that's a Latin for oak. Oaks have been around, they're across the world. Um, Quercus uh, turbinella, scrub oak. And here it is in a wash on this trip. I said, wow, that looks like a scrub oak. So many times, you'll get into some country that is nothing but scrub oak and it's dense. It's like you can't wade through it. If you wanted to create an evergreen impenetrable barrier on your property, this would be the oak for you. That, look at the leaves all pokey and wonderful. And look at the acorns. There, there's the, the, the crazed horticulturist going, acorns, acorns, yay. So Quercus turbinella, a beautiful uh, small oak. I've seen it up near Oracle, Arizona. I've seen some very large ones where it gets run off from the road, but typically a six by six uh, shrub and very dense and, and the great acorn drop. So if you're into feeding uh, critters, there it is again. And I should say something about oaks while I've got your attention. Oaks <laughs> provide so much life, not just acorns, but insects visit them. Everybody, everybody, visits from vertebrates to invertebrates to fungi uh, 
has something to do with oak. So these are definitely, Quercus are trees of life. Oh, that's a dreadful photo of a Quercus turbinella in my yard. Okay, so let's go on the road. Um, this is a favorite dirt road. I, I sing about it even, but I won't do that to you today. A favorite dirt road. Should we go left? Should we go right? These big decisions when you're out there, as long as you got water and lunch and your camera, life is good. This is a great sign. And maybe that's a good, this would have, would have been a good uh, title today. <laughs> and uh, limited maintenance. You know? I, the one picture I don't have is one that says uh, no vehicular tra traffic beyond this point. And that's too would be a, a very good sign. So you're out and about. Oh my gosh, look at that. There's an Arizona white oak in the background of that sign. So dirt roads, dirt roads out into the hills. This is promising. We're headed into a, what they called a biome called the Madre and Evergreen Woodland. Okay, it, it's, it's evergreen woodland. So it's the oaks, and it'll be pinyon pine. It'll probably be chihuahuan pine, those two pine species, and then the oak species. And we're just, so I learned when I was reading about all this, trying to re remind myself that, you know, you got a woodland where there's space between, there's grassland, but in an oak forest, everything is tight and, and you can't, you look up and you're just looking in through canopy. Pretty cool. A favorite dirt road into, and I love rolling hills with oaks and look at the oaks covering the distance. Well, and oh, I, I forgot to mention the, the other evergreen would be two species of junipers maybe, usually alligator juniper, juniperus depiana. So oaks, pinyon pines, chihuahuan pines, and juniperus. That would be the biome of the Madrean evergreen. For egg, half the fun, the old, uh, and getting half the fun. And you know that, the Chiricahua National Monument. This is a favorite spot. That's our truck down there. In the, down there. Does my cursor point or is that just me? Um, that's my, our truck down there. And it's backed up against oaks. But out in front, across that plain, those are all mesquites. And wait a minute, bush, mimosa by insifera. So mesquites, but up in those rocks, oaks, 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 oaks. And a funny thing in that, those rocks, jojoba, where you would never, well, I didn't expect to see, I said, my goodness, there's jojoba growing with oaks. So it's very, we find it a place to visit. Got bold. Uh, many things happen, cat, even if it, see the wall, the, the boulders are hiding, it's moist underneath. So cool things erupt from in and around these boulders. And there, there is a, a Madrean woodland. You know, as you get out in there, there's there's more to be seen. We we see water. Oh, turkeys. Ghoul's turkey has got to be one of the most uh, best reintroductions. <laughs> I laugh with friends. It's impossible to go into the woods without seeing turkeys. One day we were so excited. We'd been on a trip and we saw 10 turkeys. We came home and there were 30. Oh. Parades, but they're quite aft and like to hang out with you. Here I was working on a writing a script for a radio show, Arizona floor in front of me, and I'm getting help as you can see. These are quadamundis. This is in a riparian corridor, but uh, banked on either side by a evergreen woodland. See all those tails under that? Those are quadamundi tails. You know, this is a, a game cam shot uh, that a friend shared with me uh, from the Center for Biological Diversity, Jag El Tigre. And their evergreen, the Madre and Evergreen Woodland is their, is their country. Okay, this is, this is so cool. Um, I love that shot. There's a, a print a friend gave me of a jaguar. Look, and that's our cat Buster to give you some scale on that footprint but i was thinking that a, if a jaguar could sing <laughs> and who knows maybe they can i've never been out there to catch them 
And I was thinking, I'm a borderland jaguar, and the mountains is where I'm found. I'm a borderland jaguar, the mountains is where I'm found. And in case you didn't know it, a tea back in town. I like the Pelencios, the Chiricahuas are pretty neat. Baba Kiwis are so rugged. Santa Rita's are pretty sweet. I'm a borderland jaguar, the mountains is where I'm found. And I thought I'd better tell you, El Tigre is back in town. I like the seafood diet. It suits me to a T. Whenever I get hungry, I eat the very first thing I see because I'm a borderland jaguar, yeah. And the mountains is where I'm found. And I thought I'd better warn you, yeah. El Tigre's back in town. I may eat a ghoul's turkey. I may eat a coos white-tailed deer. I may sleep underneath an emery oak. I'm so happy that I'm here because I'm a borderland jaguar. And the Madrean woodland is where I'm found. And I thought I'd better warn you, well, ooh, El Tigre's back in town. Now listen up. Don't put a collar on me. That don't work for me at all. Don't build that big old copper mine. Let's tear down that doggone wall because I'm a borderland jaguar. And the Madrean woodland is where I'm found. And I thought I'd better tell you, yes. El Tigre's back in town. I'll tag it. I thought I'd better tell you, well, ooh, yeah. <laughs> El Tigre is back in town. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Oh, let's get back to the oak. There, there is a Mexican oak. Quercus, Latin for oak. Oblongifolia. Oblongifolia. Isn't that a beautiful name? What's oblong? What's oblong? I'm going to show you. There is a Mexican blue oak. If you look in the slopes behind it, I love this hill. I love this hill. Mexican blue oaks on the hillside. If you, in, oh, I'll just, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm so excited. All right, there's oblongifolia. Look at those beautiful green, long, oblong leaves. That's what oblongifolia about this Mexican blue oak. And you can see why I got the name, common name, blue oak. And here's interesting. Here's what I learned when I'm doing oaks. Um, the acorns drop at different times of the year, okay? Oblongifolia, Mexican blue. These are, this picture was just taken recently. So look, the acorns are forming. I'm pointing at the screen, which you can't see. Um, the acorns are just forming now, because guess what? The acorns on this one aren't ready till November. I think that's pretty magical. There they are. So here's a November shot, that little dark one. Though, you know, so much of getting acorns is opportunistic. I mean, you can't, oh, I gotta come back in two weeks. You just go and if they're green, get them. And they'll age in a baggie, a plastic bag, a Ziploc sort of thing. And, and a lot of times if you're not paying attention, they'll start to germinate. So you better get them in your nursery mix. There they are. Am I excited? I'm very excited to be gathering. It's the last oak acorn of the season for me. That's Ms. Mosquiti. We take this very seriously. Before I forget, you find gall and oak. There are a specific tiny wasps called gall wasps. They specialize in galls. They only visit two species, oak genera and, and rose, oh, oak species and, and, and roses. They do galls on those. To, there's that specialized. And there are so many galls on oaks that there are different shapes and sizes. Someone has created a, like a key to all these different shapes and sizes. Anyway, here's a round one. There is a larva inside that, all in the center capsule of that gall. These don't do any harm and they're charming. I once had a guy call me and said, I can't figure out this plant. It's got, it's got these spiny leaves and it's got beautiful little red fruit all over. Well, the little red fruit were dozens of red galls. They weren't fruit. So Mexican blue oak. There they are. November harvest. I, I write you, uh, show you this. This is a, a ceanothus, a buckbrush. And I put it here to remind me to tell you about propagation. And, uh, and I touched on that briefly about acorns and you get them at certain times of year. When they drop, I mean, why are they dropping then? You know, why does the embryo oak drop? First of July. Why is the uh, Mexican blue drop in November? And you think about that stuff when you're planting plants. And uh, there are three species of ceanothus that I see in the hills. This is Intergerimus up in the Chiricahuas, uh, Findleri, 
which is a fantastic one. Spine, uh, spinesis, it's the only one with spiny tips on the branches. And then Gregii, and years ago I was getting a seed on Gregii. And you gotta get there quickly because the seeds burst, they pop, de-hiss. So if you don't get them, if you're late, that's that. So I wrote a poem, and I'll read it to you. I gathered seed of Cianosis Gregii on a rocky slope in May. Buckbrush is what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's easier to say. It got that common name, browse, especially for deer. So I put those seed capsules in an envelope on a bookshelf very near where I sit to write down plant lists and sometimes write a check. So I'm sitting there and I hear a noise and wonder, what the heck? Capsules were popping open, tiny seeds were shooting out. I'm going to be growing Cianothus this year. Now there is no doubt. So should I scarify or stratify or maybe combine the two? I want those seeds to germinate. I've got to figure out what to do. I'll use my incredible plant wisdom and a little ecology. A lot of it will be magic with just a pinch of theology. I'll agonize, I'll pray, I'll plead to some very weird gods. I take this pretty seriously. I'd never have picked those pods. But by fall, I'll have tiny plants by seed from that rocky slope. Seeds I remember hearing popping in an envelope. I want to sound in an the plants keeps old real. So here's a road into the hills, into the into a biome called a Madrean evergreen woodland. We've got pinyon pine, we got Arizona white oak a lot in here, and we're traveling and we're saying, oh wow, what are the what are those on those rock outcrops over there to the left? What are those? Oh my goodness, it's the Arizona rainbow hedgehog on rocky outcrops. Look at the, there's a pinyon pine up in the left hand corner. So you can tell we're in this evergreen woodland. And we look at, look at the recruitment, seed falling into crevices of rocks of this, this uh, hedgehog, this rainbow hedgehog, lot rock spots like this. And we thought, man, I wonder when it blooms, because this has a beautiful bloom. So we, every few weeks we go back, we went back there six times to see if it ever bloomed, you know? <gasps> And it did, you know, we said, oh my word, you know, we're shouting, oh my goodness, oh my gosh, look at that, oh my goodness. Ms. Mosquiti said to me, you know, people were listening in, they think we were making love, and it's like, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> and then, look at this one, oh my, and here you go. I counted the blooms on this, it was like 18 or something. And a couple months, about a month later, we said, I wonder if that one that had 18 flowers on it set seed. Can we find it? Oh, yeah, we can find it. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Look, it did. I think it was more, it was more seed pods than I had counted flowers. So, um, in that woodland, we come across a marvelous tree called Arbutus arizonica, Arizona madrone. It's in the Heath family. Heath family, think manzanita. And we see so many of these in there, uh, these madrones. Look at the bark. These are trees. These are big trees. And it's in that family. It's magical. Look at the wood. Sometimes the red goes all the way to the, uh, the red bark. And other times it's gray and you don't see the red till you're way up in the canopy. And then the red bark, uh, you'll see it, right? Um, I just can't. It's a new... This one, we were on a precarious dirt road, on a very narrow precarious mountain road. And we saw it at the corner. We had to drive several hundred yards to find a place safely pull off. And we've discovered a lot on these uh, oaks, these, not oaks, these madrones, that some of them are so old and they'll have immense dead parts, but so much, they still are alive. And, and uh, some of these you tap on and you, up and down that hollow spot, you get different tones. Well, you know, out there. Sorry. Um, looking up through the canopy, Arizona madrone, and the trees around it, the oaks are silverleaf oak right there. There's a baby madrone coming up from the ground. The third one, I couldn't, but I wanted to stick in a smart tree. Arizona quirk, Arizona magnificent oaks. This no, I don't remember. I know this by the 
paradise theory, but I don't think that's that one. That word. I love it when Marley like this. They want your yard, right? Is oh, get me Marley Oak from my yard. At. Once when we were out venturing about, Ms. Mesquite and me, we parked under an immense Arizona white oak. We couldn't get our two arms barely around the trunk, and there's the bark of this oak tree we parked under and picnicked. There are the acorns that yours truly can't wait to gather and grow. There's a beautiful, that's a real typical Arizona white oak. The funny thing is on an oak tree, you call that tree, and on one side you say, what, what the heck, this does not look like, this does not look like uh, an Arizona white, where you go back to, all right, this, this here is Arizona white. You just never know. Uh, the leaves can differ from branch to branch, but that's typical. I love this. This is Arizona white oak with had a dead branch. And I love, look at the grains of oak. This is a burl, uh, or this is a hollow burl. Um, this one was magical. It makes me, miss, you know, when you're a little kid, how something like this would be so magical. You'd stick tokens or offerings in there, wouldn't you? Our house is cluttered with uh, chunks of oak with beautiful grains. That's a little skunk skull. I help my uh, Marie Kondo nightmare with the, my clutter. All right, that's Ms. Mesquite in front of a favorite oak, um, tumi oaks. They're usually small shrubs. It's Quercus tumii. Here's a small tree. And in the Pelancios once, a few years ago, I saw some good, oh, 10 foot trees, easily 10 foot trees with little trunks. Here, this is a nice one. This is actually about that size as well. Um, but usually they're a shrub. If you get up in the Chiricahua National Monument and go up to where it's flat and windy, these trees look like they've been designed by someone who wanted, you know, a beautiful, a large garden with windswept wind trees. These oaks swept the, the slabs of rock in the Chiricahua National Monument. There are the beautiful acorns. Quercus tumii. If you wanted a nice evergreen shrub or small tree or yard, uh, this is a recommended species. I have eight tumiis in my uh, yard, and now you know one of my passwords. Arizona tumi oak. Beautiful. So our evergreen oaks, and I'll talk about this more, and all our, all our oaks are evergreen with the exception of gambolai. Um, but our evergreen oaks push off the old in the spring, push off the old leaves and push on new leaves and flower. And, and this tumi oak, we were up uh, off Rucker Road somewhere, I think. And I got in close. Now see the green and yellow, that's the old leaves falling, being pushed off. The little red push are the new leaves coming on. And all the, those are male flowers. Those are male catkins starting. So this uh, tumi oak is pushing off. This is the only time our, our evergreen oaks drop their leaves in the spring when they flower. There it is. Silverleaf oak, Quercus hypoleucoides. My friend Mimi Camp in Bisbee says it's the queen of the oaks. I love that she gives it a gender and yours. Um, Hypoleucoides means underneath it's white. And there you go. If you get on a, a slope on a windy day, and that's not hard to do <laughs> in the spring, in the windy day, when the wind blows forever, but in slopes, and th this tree could be the predominant oak on some slopes, and the wind blows, and the whole slope turns white. Then the wind stops, and it's green, and then the wind picks up. What an oak. I love it. And if I were, you know, this oak almost begs to be, you know, it probably is. I know people are growing this in Portland, Oregon. Um, I have weird opinions about moving trees around the country. But for, for around here, I recommend, I think it's gross. It grows fast. There are the acorns. That's a good crop. Here's a Quercus hypoleucoides, silverleaf oak. Here's one in my yard. I've planted, we have several. Um, you probably didn't think a horticulturist could afford a, afford a swimming pool, did you? But, um, and then there's one, <laughs> and then there's one off to the far left of the screen. Uh, there's a big oak near our garden and it seemed to like that compost over there. Oh my word. Um, there it is again, silverleaf oak in our yard with a, 
ember yolk up in the left hand corner with branch sticking in. I have planted so many oaks in our 25 years that we now live and there was nothing and I'm so happy. We always say, well, oaks take forever to grow, Petey. <laughs> Dude, I'm still planting oaks. And I'm usually older than the person talking. Um, well, I'm going to jump to sumax, one of my favorite, favorite genus of plants. Sumax, Rus, R-H-U-S. This is an evergreen sumac in the hills. Uh, Rus, it's now Rus virens, um, Coriophila or Coriophila, if you prefer. But it used to be just Rus Coriophila, now it's virens. Because over in West Texas, there's Rus virens virens, another evergreen sumac. It's a beautiful shrub and available in the nursery trade, but more fun in the wild. Well, put it in your yard, right? Flowers late, like it's flowering now. And then beautiful seed. All of these sumacs are edible. I mean, you could pop them in your mouth. They're tart. Some of them have names like the, the little leaf sumac, Rus microphylla, it's sometimes called soda pop bush because you can make these sun teas. The herbalist uh, Michael Moore called the drinks you can make Rus Aid, R H U S A D E, Rus Aid, like lemon aid. Um, so you can make these, here these beautiful, and sometimes you'll find it in the, in the animal scats, of course, and I hope you stop to look at scats to see what's going on. Rus trilobata, you talk about a marvelous, this one, one of the common names for this uh, three-leaf sumac is lemonade berry. And those sticky seeds are tart, a little tart. If you're 30 and you need something to tarten up your mouth, stick one of these red berries in your mouth or gather them. I was thinking, this is funny, you can make a tea with that handful and then take those seeds, that, that fruit, and then you can clean it and now you've got your seed ready for planting. This is a marvelous plant. Um, the Rus trilobata, this Rus trilobata here, turns a bright red in the fall, so it's a fall color, okay? Here's scarlet sumac uh, in the Chiricahuas, Rus glabra. Glabra means smooth. Uh, you can say glabra if you want. You can say glabra. Um, Rus glabra, scarlet sumac on a, on a rocky slope. Isn't that beautiful? That's a killer. That's a wonderful plant. That's a spot of that. And it's perched in a gamble oak. The only deciduous oak in Arizona is the gamble oak, the only oak that drops its leaves, okay? It doesn't, it's no fabulous color, they just turn brown. It's, by the way, acorn drop on this, October. And once we came up to this very spot, this is up the Pinery Canyon Road that goes up toward Onion Saddle and descends to Paradise and Portal. Um, and this day we said, ah, I'm so tired, and we had some cots, we just purchased some cots. I said, let's, Let's just put out our cots and, and snooze in the shade of these ponderosa pines and, and Apache, uh, no, uh, Chihuahuan pine and these gamble oaks and, and this spot flew in, spotted, spotted owl, and it flew in there. Once when we came up at this very spot to gather acorns in October, black bears had beat us to it. And there were branches broken. They'd gotten up in the trees and there were branches strewn all around. And the scats, the bear scats, the immense beautiful bear scats were just loaded with crunched up acorns. There's what the leaves look like. This is the classic oak. If you think oaks back east, right? Uh, the deciduous oaks of the eastern uh, U.S. So here's gamble oak. There are the, oak, they're the acorns that drop drop over the love. Well, bears, everyone loves. Who doesn't love an oak? I mean, how many critters eat the acorns between the turkeys, the quadrimundies, the, the jays, the jays, so the, wood, the acorn woodpecker. There are critters out there planting. The jays plant the doggone things. They're not planting them on purpose. They just forget where they put them. There's a recruitment. There's a little, little gamble oak coming up. All right. See that, that, that rubble? It looks like sidewalk that fell apart, doesn't it? This is that rubble, that hard limestone rock is where you find this little oak. This picture is taken up in Fort Bowie, up on a slope. You can see it looks like uh, Ms. Mesquite standing up. And this little shrub sandpaper oak, Quercus 
pungens. Pungens referring to the little pointy leaves. See the little points on the leaves? I have wanted to grow this little, little oak for ages and I could never, I am never there. I am never there. Here are the leaves. I said, man, I've never. And it's only, I've only thought on two spots, up there in Fort Bowie and then over toward Portal on a really limestone, rubbly, looks like sidewalk or a foundation and over there and it's shrubby over there too there's small trees like eight ten foot trees sometimes but never find the oaks uh, acorns so a few weeks ago we're over there yeehaw <laughs> and so i immediately uh Texted Spadefoot Nursery in Tucson said, we're going to be growing sandpaper oak. We're going to be rich. We're going to be very, very rich. Oh, dear. What an unusual, marvelous oak. All right, I'm jumping. A, here's a cool oak. This is a Quercus rugosa. Um, it used to be reticulata. It's rugosa. I think we're just lucky to have it. I think it's really a Mexican species. It really is far down in Mexico. It can be it can be tree like these little brown the little brown things dangling things are the male uh, dominate the cat okay those little perhaps how big the leaves get and there's some that get bigger you get in the canyon and there are leaves that are huge um, what a great and then the new push on this one in the spring, look at the red push on it. How fun. And this can be a shrub. Like sometimes you just go by these immense uh, eight foot tall branchy shrubs of this one or get in the canyons and it's a nice, a nice tree. The red push of Quercus rugosa. Netleaf, that's the common name, netleaf oak. I couldn't think of it there for a second. Oh, look at the, I love this way the acorns set up. Again, when it was, uh, these are ready. I'm thinking these acorns were ready in um, August. Yeah, we started seeing them. There's the leaf again. It's it's rough. It's like cardboard. Well, that's Farley. And if he'd be so kind to walk us down our driveway and then over to the creek to show you Quercus emrii, uh, a favorite oak there. That's Farley and Quercus emrii. These are the male catkins. See how the leaves are turning yellow? This is when the spring, when emry oak, which is a Evergreen oak. This is really the oak of the borderlands to me. Happiness with fly. These are the male cat. The feet are back near where those leave those petioles of the leaves are, where it's attached to the branch. You can't see those. It's wind pollinated, so you got all this pollen. Look, there you go, male flowers. So in the spring, the oaks go, what's happening? Oh, the oaks are turning to yellow. Well, they're dropping their leaves and they're flowering, the male, the, the flower, the male flowers. And here, see where the female flower is hidden? And those are baby acorns, baby, those are the start of acorns. And they're the acorns. So this is the edible acorn. This acorn is edible right off the tree when it starts to fall in July. You can buy bags, Ziploc bags, weighed out along the border. Once Ms. Mosquito and I, years ago, Ms. Mosquito and I were in the, the base of the Galeros and we, we were camping and there were Apaches, uh, the Apache Nation groups, big pickups, were in there gathering these acorns. At one point we came around a bin on a dirt road and we almost ran over a family. I mean, this is serious. This, this oak in the borderlands is known as bayota, uh, which is simply Spanish for acorn, but this honor of this acorn in the hip. When I grow this and show it to people, let's see what the next photo is. When I show it to people, at the farmer's market, some people actually get teary and say, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, we, my family, we went out for days on time and we'd gather the acorns and we'd bring them home. Oh, my mom still loves, I've got to have one of these bayotas. It just brings out stories. And that, my friends, is one of the reasons I sit up at the farmer's market. 
to have these stories told to me. There's so much to learn, but it's among, it's not among the scientists all the time, right? It's among the people who live here. So here's an oak that feeds hundreds of invertebrates, hundreds of vertebrates, <laughs> and we're the vertebrates. The humans are part of it. And uh, I know this oak is the oak. It is Bayota, you know? Look, here's a huge, when it died, we were up in the hills. I said, oh my gosh, we, I wish I'd seen this oak. I wish I had seen this Emory oak. If you look carefully under that oak tree, there, that's Ms. Mosquiti. She said, we should camp here. I said, you're right. We should camp here under this immense bayota. So I gather the acorns. And I grow them. You know, I got into it for a long time. My little nursery... I wanted to be wholesale. I wasn't much into having people in the house. We were, we were wholesale, got contracts to grow thousands, forest service contracts. Um, I did sections of the Mount Lemmon Highway of pines and oaks. So, and it was, I should just tell you a brief history. It was about 10, 11 years ago that I was in Bisbee and realized I was burning out on growing 10 and 20, 30,000 <laughs> seedlings. And said, you know, maybe I should just turn the public on to these things. And, and I started coming to the Bisbee Farmers Market. Uh, this is the first year I haven't been there in many years. I will return. I'm taking a COVID respite, uh, but I will return to the market because it is a glorious place to be. I gather these acorns. And I bag, that's how you gather them. If I can't plant them right away, I put them in a Ziploc and in the refrigerator. And, and um, I want to read you this poem. I grow native plants, you know what I mean? The ones in the desert and the sky islands and all those life zones, those biomes in between, like the grassland, oak woodland, transition zone too. Shoot, if alpine tundra were nearby, I'd grow some, some plant from that biome for you. But anyway, I love to bring seed home and shout to anyone who will listen. Man, what a blast! You don't know what you're missing. I mean, soon we'll be rich. We'll be wealthy indeed. New tires, new jeans. Hey, tell me what you need. Well, it's sort of a joke because I shout it all the time. And I remember when I shouted it to an old friend of mine. You are rich, Petey. You're rich beyond compare. And she gave me that look, that meaningful stare. New Agers and Guru Ways, Vegetarian Yoga, Crystal Clear Gaze. So I was under an oak tree gathering acorns, and this isn't a lie. Deer stood beside me, bantail pigeons sat silhouetted by sky. Oh, I am rich, I realized. I am very rich indeed. And under that oak tree, I found what I need. Wild plants, wild animals, wild places to be. I think we all need that. And I hope you agree. There's some baby emery oaks. And there are several thousand emery, baby emery oaks, okay. Hey, um, for many years, if I could, I, I don't know what the time is, but I've got one more to tell you here. I camped up in these hills. This is the Galeros uh, Mountains. They're rugged, they're magical. I see bighorn sheep in there on a reg pretty regular basis. I once was leaving there and, and there were some hunters. I was any bighorn sheep and I had, of course, but I'm not going to tell them. <laughs> oh, dear. I'd seen some, you know. Um, this is that kind of country. This is a funny picture. You, if you had a magnifying glass in the middle of that photo, there's some bighorn sheep on that slope. I took that picture with a tiny Kodak uh, point and shoot thing years and years ago. But um, let's see if I can go back. To that that's called the Galliuro escarpment, and I'd like to camp in the oaks beneath it. But a few times I got to camp by myself there. I loved camping by myself. Um, truck camping, I call it, where I just crawl in the bed of the truck and pull my sleeping bag over me in the open bed, stare at the stare at the sky, you know, and the camp. And, and I was camped in those hills. And I haven't told many people about this, but I was camped in those hills and, and uh, sleeping in the back of the truck, staring at the stars. I fell asleep, and I woke up to um, some noise, and the campfire had been built up. And I, <laughs> I said, "What?" And I looked at the fire, and I, I said, "What am I seeing? What am I seeing? I'm, I can't believe I'm seeing what I'm seeing and what I was for big."
found my camper. And they were drinking beer. And they were drinking my beer. And I said, well, I said, hey, you borregos, why are you here? Why'd you come in my camp and start drinking my beer? Go back to those steep slopes that are very near. You crazy borregos, why are you here? Well, a big old ram with a huge curl looked. He said, well, look who's awake. Petey Muskeety, get over here. Come on over. Let's sit around the fire. Let's tell stories. L let's drink beer. I said, oh, yeah, let's drink my beer, right? So, okay, okay. So I go over and I join them. And, oh, my gosh, we had the best time drinking my beer. And we tell stories about mountain lions and jaguars and, and lambs and, and golden eagles and, and beautiful clear water and rugged slopes. At one point, a ewe, a bighorn ewe, sauntered over to me as only a bighorn ewe can saunter. She came up, nudged my face. She had beautiful dark eyes and beautiful eyelashes. As you know, bighorn sheep, ewes, have beautiful eyelashes. She batted them. I said, well, I'm, you got beautiful eyelashes, but I just got to let you know, you know, I, I, I'm married. <laughs> and there was silence. And then she belched, spraying a fine mist of partially digested and fermented forbs and herbs across my face. Much laughter. And I shouted, oh my gosh, Aloysia Roddy, I rice bee brush as I wipe my face. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. And she sauntered away. And we told and we sing through the night, we're a bunch of rachos, and we're glad that we're here. We love the desert and mountains so near. We love wide open spaces and water so clear. We're a bunch of borrachos, and we're glad that we're here. And so, you know, I woke up the next morning in my sack, in my sleepy bag, and I, man, what a crazy, crazy dream. What a dream. And I looked out, and the fire ring, and there were beer bottles around the fire ring. Oh, oh, it did happen. And so from now on, uh, you'll hear me burst into song. Oh, yeah, I burst into song and I said, hey, I'm Petey Mosquiti and I'm glad that I'm here. I love the desert and mountains so near. Give me wide open country and running water so clear. I'm Petey Mosquiti and I'm glad that I'm here. I'm Petey Mosquiti. Don't come in my camp and drink all my beer. I'm Petey Mosquiti. And I'm glad that I'm here. That's the lady, Ibra. That's what big horns she like. Oh, and there is my fire ring. Oh, man. Thank you so much. I, I'm going to end on turtles. Did I tell you that I, I love turtles so much? I had a turtle tattoo, <laughs> a box turtle. I explained to the tattoo artist, I said, you know, these are the turtle of my childhood. And these are. These uh, critters remind me of everything wonderful in life. Turtles, don't that. And thanks for uh, sticking around on Zoom. I had a great time. Thanks.